Hello and welcome to The Reluctant Investor and to today's video in which I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I personally got started with investing. Now, that's not because I'm particularly interesting, um, I can assure you that I'm not, uh, it's just because when I first started investing or researching investing, I came in to the, uh, to the concept with absolutely no idea what I was doing. I was um, totally blind, so to speak. So um, if any of you are watching, given the target demographic of this channel um, and are in a similar boat, not quite sure what you're doing, uh, not quite sure what you need um, in terms of knowledge, resources, all the like, um, then hopefully this video can um, help by me, by me relaying some of my experiences. You might get some shortcuts, you might um, gain some insights, or if nothing else, you might at least realize that it's uh, totally normal to be um, unsure and want to have as much information as possible before before going ahead with anything. So as I mentioned in my introductory video uh, last weekend, for any of you who saw that, I I first came across investing because I had been putting £200 a month into a help to buy ISA, which was a um, government back scheme to try and help people get on the property ladder. And uh, once I had fortunately bought a house, uh, that money obviously was no longer going into a help to buy ISA. And I figured, since I'd learned to live without that extra £200 instead of um, having that come into my bank account, I should try and put it towards long-term savings. So um, originally I looked at savings accounts, but interest, late, uh, interest rates rather were very low at the time and uh, are even lower now. So even if you um, were to lock your money away for two or three years, um, you're probably looking at below inflationary uh, rates of interest. So. Um, to me, that wasn't really worthwhile. I might as well leave the money in my current account if I was going to do that. So I kept looking for uh, better ideas. And that's how I came across the idea of investing and eventually um, a stocks and shares ISA, which um, for anyone who doesn't know is um, basically a vehicle for uh, holding investments that uh, is tax free and you can put in up to £20,000 a year, uh, which was far more than a I would be needing, and that was probably more than I was making um, after tax year at the time. So um, I decided that was probably the best route for me. But again, I had no idea really what a stocks and shares ISA was. I didn't even know. Like I just expressed to you that it was it's a vehicle. Pol I didn't know if you just put the money in there and that was all automatically invested. I didn't know uh, who to go to about setting one up, um, how it was invested, anything like that. So thinking, well, this is money related. I um, called my bank, which is Lloyds Bank, and I said, um, I'm interested in opening a stocks and shares like so, but I was wondering if you could give me some more information. And they said, oh, come in for a, come in for a chat, it's coming for a meeting. So I said, okay. Went for an appointment and I said, yeah, I'm interested in a stocks and shares like And he said, yeah, we can help you with that. Um, the only requirements are you either have to have a salary of over 250,000 pounds a year or uh, a mortgage with Lloyds valued at over £750,000. So um, I didn't have either of those things. So I said to him, is that uh, a Lloyd's requirement for you to help set one up? Or is that just the bare minimum for anyone setting up a stocks and shares ISA? And he said, I've no idea, to be honest with you. So um, if anything shows the need for a, a channel like this and for better information from wherever it comes from, not necessarily from me, um, it's that someone who works in a bank doesn't even um, doesn't even know that sort of quite, what should be quite a basic uh, level of information on a, on a stocks and shares ISA. So anyhow, I um, I left and uh, discovered that you don't need, that those are just Lloyd's requirements for them to aid you with um, with the stocks and shares ISA. You can go it alone and there are no, there is no uh, annual income requirements or mortgage requirements for setting up a stocks and shares ISA. I can assure you of that. So once I discovered that uh, I didn't need an income of a quarter of a million pounds or a mortgage of three quarters of a million pounds, fortunately, uh, in order to set up a stocks and shares ISA, but that uh, without meeting those criteria, I wouldn't be able to do it with my bank, I uh, started looking online for the ways in which I could do it. And that's how I came across uh, brokerage firms or, or stock brokers, which um, basically just uh, are a way in which for people to acquire stocks, shares. Uh, ETFs, whatever it might be, and um, but it, again, there are uh, many different types of stockbrokers and uh, brokerage firms, and they all offer different. Um, you know, they're all tailored better to different people. So um, I was sort of back at square one, but 
I, w I would say on this front there is a, a lot of useful um, resources out there online that compare the different uh, brokerage firms wherever you may be. Um, so the UK in my case and uh, what they offer, the, everyone has pros and cons. And in the end, I went with one called Hargreaves Lansdowne, uh, which is one of the largest um, brokerage firms in the UK. Um, and I went with them because the pros of uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne is that their app and website are quite usable. They're quite easy to understand, even for some, uh, a beginner as I was at the time. And uh, their customer service is, I think it's sort of like a 24 hour customer service and you can call and ask questions and, and they tend to be quite receptive, um, which for someone who is still quite reluctant and unsure, um, you know, that, that made me feel as though I could uh, breathe a little easier. Um, if, if that's not where you are, if you're a bit more advanced, you're a bit more comfortable using any brokerage firm, then they're probably not the best because the cons of Hargreaves Lansdowne is that the charges are a little, um, or considerably higher than, than some and a little higher than others. So um, it's all a trade-off and like I say, there are useful resources out there, but if the demand is there and you'd rather uh, me lay it out, maybe in the future I'll make a video on all about different brokerage firms and, and uh, the, the pros and cons of each. Um, another thing for me personally with Hargreaves Lansdowne is that um, the initial charges, uh, I, I don't, in trade regularly, I uh, tend to invest for a, a long period of time. If, if um, Whereas if someone was looking to make lots of different trades, sort of uh, on, a, on a frequent basis, which I wouldn't personally recommend, but um, if, if that was what someone was looking to do, again, you would want someone with um, very low charges, especially if you were doing uh, high frequency, um, sort of low volume trades. Uh, anyhow, I digress. I set up a Hargreaves Anstown account. Uh, and from that point, all I had to do was learn how to invest. So um, the hard bit was done. No, not really. Uh, I um, then started uh, buying books about investing, reading anything on any online resources again, or uh, YouTube videos such as this one, uh, until I felt a bit more confident about what I was doing. And it quickly became clear that there, there are basically, for, there are lots of different types of investors, so to speak, you know, growth investors, there are value investors, all these terms that if you're researching the topic, you probably come across. But in terms of individual investors, I think the two main types of people who invest in index funds and people who um, actively manage uh, their portfolio. So yeah, they might pick individual stocks rather than buying a very broad range basket of stocks. And um, originally I was primarily interested in the idea of investing in index funds because like I say, when I came into this, it was just that 200 pounds a month that I just wanted uh, to get a better rate of return over a long period of time than a you know, 1% savings account. So, but then again, like a lot of other people, once you start reading about um, stock picking, uh, people think it's much easier than it is and they think, oh, I'll, I'll be able to do that. So again, I got quite interested in that idea. So ultimately I settled upon the idea of um, largely investing passively in index funds uh, in terms of the bulk of my savings, but then leaving a little bit of wiggle room for um, picking on rare occasions, individual stocks that I felt confident were not just good companies, but were selling at, at fair value or, or um, even for a, a cheap price. But I will come again more to my personal investing strategy and what, what might be right for different people in another video. This video is primarily just to give you an idea of where I started and, and the journey to feeling confident enough to actually do something with my money and, and knowing how to set up an account. And, if there are any of you watching that, you know, maybe had heard about stocks and shares ISAs, but had no idea uh, how to set one up or had had similar experiences to me in that very early, early period, then um, hopefully this was of some benefit. I should say that between, between buying the house so that I no, no longer had the uh, help to buy ISA, 200 pounds going into it. So that when I started researching, uh, investing to m me make my first investment was from about August of 2018 to, um, to December. So it was quite a long period of time, but I would say um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, especially, you know, I'm quite young, so um, I don't think people say time in the market is uh, is important, but, you know, uh, four or five months in the, in the grand scheme of things to, um, to actually know what you're doing is, uh, there's no huge rush. Um, be better to feel confident and well-informed. 
So hopefully today's video um, gave you a decent idea of how I personally got started in the context of this channel so that you um, so that I have some transparency about my uh, starting position, how long I've been investing, that type of thing. And to give you some peace of mind if you're someone who's really not sure. And hopefully, uh, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos, um, maybe going into more depth about how I invest, how um, how you might be able to, how um, the next step of actually picking um, things like whether you want to invest in index funds or individual stocks and how you might go about doing either of them, uh, portfolio management, all that type of thing. Um, I'm going to go piece by piece with the channel. So starting at the very beginning, that's why we had the introduction last week and then this week I'm just talking about how I got started. So um, really the, the basics covered early on and hopefully that will be of the most benefit to um, the people that I really want to help with this channel. So thank you all for watching. Like I say, do um, do hit the subscribe button if you, uh, if you enjoyed today's video and even give us a like because uh, it's very early days and I'm sure that will be of a huge help to the uh, YouTube algorithms.